this idiot in a shed has managed to f or get round that because yeah pain in the ass but fun to fix hello there I'm another magento dev M1 to M2 migrations, data migrations, they're fun aren't they? They are fun. I figured some stuff out what I didn't know, um, well I didn't know about 45 minutes ago and um, I, I couldn't really find any reference to it on the internet, it was just something that I thought well, I'll just try this, let me have a look. Right. Essentially what I've got is a migration of a Magento 1.9.4.4 to a Magento 2.4.1 at, at this stage. Um, all the data seems to migrate well once I've f made a minor fix to the database which causes an error and also I don't, I, in this install I can't pull over the reviews. There's too much spam in there and it, it, no matter what I do it always breaks. So there's something in the reviews in the Magento 1 that it just isn't liking bringing across the Magento 2. Luckily the client doesn't need the reviews but um, it's, that's, that is a pain in the ass I must admit. So I'm, I'm skipping that step. However there's another little issue which I'm just going to test it works now because I think, I've, I think I've got everything set up right now. Magento 2 comes with a default attribute called colour spelt American C-O-L-O-R um, my um, Magento 1 store that I'm migrating, uh, migrating from uses that attribute to um, provide relationships between parent and children for a particular product type right <clears throat> now when I do my migration for some reason any of the products that use color they don't have the they don't have the relationship between the parents and, and children check some others say size for example they they have it it's worked it's, it's related it's bringing all the products across all the simple products are coming across they're just not getting related to the parent and my theory was after checking into the magento 2 attributes on upon a, an, a blank install is that color is there but it's disabled along with manufacturer so i'm installing a brand new magento 2 the, the attribute is disabled my theory is that that's why it isn't linking so what want to do is whenever you're doing data migrations from Magento 1 to Magento 2 install in Magento in Magento 2 then save a copy of that database because for my money the only way to get this to work properly is to do it from a, a blank install of Magento 2 now I've, I've um, used my config PHP as well I think I'm using that to my advantage so originally a few weeks ago I did an import of all the settings uh, over because with with Magento, I'll show you the import scripts if, if people aren't familiar. I've got some notes here with uh, the migration that I'm, for the migration that I'm doing, um, and this is these are the these are the um, commands. This seems to be a fix that I have to make to the database. I have to delete this, otherwise I get a, a SQL error that I can't seem to recover from. But it doesn't seem to have any long term effects on the store that I can see, or any knock on effects on the store. Um, and and it, these are the two. So essentially, you can import all the settings from the Magento one with that command, and then import. Crucially, the minus R means reset. Now. If you ever run into an error, if you run it with reset again, it's going to knack your installation, it's going to knack your import because it starts from scratch. So say you've imported a load of attribute sets from your Magento 1 and then it's crashed, it'll go and import them again. It doesn't know to pick up where it le it's left off if you use the R. If you remove the minus R, it seems to pick up where it's left off, however, I've had varying success with that. So really what I do now is I nuke the database and I start again. So I make my I make my um, fixes up front and then nuke the database. And one of my fixes up front, what I'm about to make, is I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna import a fresh database which I've started to do. Let's just go to SQL. So no, oh, that's for another project. So on this project here, um, yeah, I've got a blank just waiting. Uh, as I say, luckily I've got a backup which is a blank Magento 2 install. Uh, pretty much. So if I import that database, there it is. This will give me my base 
install. Now, what I was saying about config PHP. So what I've done is. When I first migrated over the settings, I then downloaded them using import dump, and I've got another video on how to do this. I then I've finished. I downloaded them to all the settings to my config PHP. So now I don't. It doesn't seem like I need to run that again. So I'm happy with the the settings in here, and also we've since been developing the the new stuff and the new Magento two, which and my developers have changed some settings in here. You know, like you know arbitrary things like max widths of page builders things like that so no, no core functionality um, <clears throat> but there's plenty of functionality to go on in here that um, that basically sets up my store from from scratch now I've got every setting dumped into here so I'm confident that going forward I'm not going to need to port over any more settings from the Magento one they're going to stay as they are at least for a few weeks um, if they make any big changes to the to the database to the settings, I, they need to let me know. You know, the client we need to work together and, and work out how we're going to migrate that. But it should be a case of just replicating that setting over in the Magento. So now I've got this installed. Um, I'll just double check it's the right database. So pop into core config, and I should have my um, yeah. I've got last I've got my URL in there, and I've got my uh, my core config. first so I made a note that I need to pop into reviews I'm gonna delete this index because they're not using reviews so fingers crossed there's gonna be no knock-on effects to this and um, it essentially tries to add another one I think is what it, what the error I get is so I, I think basically me deleting it there is just gonna actually eventually just gonna add it back and um, but that's sort of outside of this tutorial I need to sort of do that and um, I'm not advising you do that I just sort of need to do that to get this to run to show you my um, um right then so I need to install the Magento as I would normally okay so I basically ran my upgrade bit uh, you know my setup upgrade and my setup scripts on the blank database so I've got essentially a core Magento with a few extra bits and bobs that I've installed or or what have you or changes I've made to the data via upgrade scripts. Right, so if I go into um, the attribute set, so the default attribute set, this is what I'm talking about. Colour and manufacturer, they're over here. So if you're using that, if you're using like something that's in it, like I don't know if is, is size even in here. Right. So that's interesting, right? So it's working with size, and I think that's because it's not in here. The fact that colour's in here and disabled is the problem. So if you've got like some sort of custom attribute that you're using on your Magento one for, um, you know, size or any of the ones that you have to add for a configurable product for that relationship to link together, you know, the super attribute relationship, um, it appears that the Magento default migration can handle that. This is an oversight because what's happening here is it's unassigned. So because it's disabled essentially not in the attribute set, Magento migration process doesn't seem to be bringing it over as part of the configuration process. So let's see what happens if I save it as, as in an attribute set in the default one and then I run the migration. This is my uh, my theory that it's gonna it's actually gonna work. So that's all that's all run and that's all well and good, right? Okay, so I'm gonna run it now. This is gonna take a while. Um so I'll jump out a sec, but uh, let's see. Um, I'm just going to check quickly before I go uh, through. That. I'm just going to check that that entity has been added back yet. Yeah, so that's fine. That little entity is not there. Um, okay, great. Okay, let's run it. Moment of truth. So this essentially is the migration default Magento 2 migration process. It's going to run for all these checks. It's going to bring over some data. It should actually take a few minutes because, well, for this particular install, because there's a load of stuff over on the Magento one that it's meant to be bringing over thousands of products, thousands of sales. Um, yeah, we've got it's taking a bit of time. That when it when it zips through it, you know you've got a bit of an issue. So um, 
I'd rather it take a little a little while so I'll skip this bit out and I'll uh, see you on it on the other side see you if it if it works or not I might just talk about the setup of this while it's while it's running to rather than waste time so this is the core setup you connect the two databases so you can do it a couple of ways obviously you can do it anyway but this is the safest way for particularly for testing when you're during development now I've got a, a download of the live Magento One database sat on um, on my C on my SQL Pro, so I've got a live version of it. It's not actually connected to a store fully, but it's there with all the data in. Um, and I've obviously got my new uh, Magento Two one, so there, there's the config there, and I put in the obviously the local passwords. Uh, you can actually set this up with a live database, and I'm going to have to at some point because. It also Magento 2 also offers the delta migration and what that means is once it's on a live database and really you can only run this on a live database with any effect because essentially what happens is it mark, it, it sends a signal or it puts a, a marker in the database to say where it last migrated so if you run delta it will just continue to look for changes look for changes look for changes so you really can only do that on the live database so what it's going to do is it migrates all the sales all the customers all the products puts markers down and then um, if you run delta which is a similar command to um, the one I ran but instead of data you put delta it'll then look for changes obviously that's not going to work on a local copy of the database because there's no changes being made to it you know what I mean so the um, that can only be really done live so my strategy is a couple of days before go live I hook that up because effectively I don't want that running if it's going to take me six to eight to twelve weeks to build a store uh, or whatever, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk having the data, the live database of the current Magento One on a production site exposed to my development processes. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to cause any problems on the live site. So I'll do it at the last minute to just keep things in in sync. Um, and and this is good enough for development, just getting uh, all the data across as a snapshot in time. But you are gonna have to make sure that that's upgraded in in the future. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't you keep downloading? A new database um, and replacing it periodically. Well, you can't because you would lose the the markers that you've set from the original migration. So, right then, let's uh, have a look, see if it's worked. So, all my products are there, so I can check a configurable product. Is one with size attribute, I think. Wet. Look, they're coming across for size. Right then. Oh, my heart's pounding. <clears throat> so if I check one with what I'm expecting, it's got colour. If not, this has been all a waste of time. Yes, it worked. Look at that. All the colours are there. Beautiful. Right then, this video is going to make its way to YouTube. Lovely. Well, is that that attributes colour? Why not just have it enabled just from the beginning? Come on. Magento, please have it. Forward, somebody forward my video on to Magento and say, "Look, this idiot in a shed has managed to fix it." Um, I'll get round that because, yeah, pain in the ass, but fun to fix.